let's see, what did we do last week? Uh, uh, limit limit. <laughs> <Limits>. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's a couple different types of problems that we talked about. We talked about um, polynomials and rational functions where you could just take the number and just substitute it in. Out pops the number and that's your answer, right? Then we talked about um, more specifically what happens if you can't just plug the number in and get zero denominator. And the conclusion was, if you have zero over zero, when you plug the number in, that means that there's a hole in the function and you can do something algebraically, whether it involves factoring, and then you cancel common factors, then you plug the number in, or whether you have to do some other weird algebra, like it's a complex fraction, maybe you gotta do that stuff. If, it's, if there's a radical involved, you might have to do rationalization. And that's what we talked about last week, okay? If you have zero over zero, graph has a hole in it, so you got to figure out somehow, algebraically, figure out the y-coordinate of the hole. Any questions on that? Okay, so today we're still going to talk about limits of rational functions. But this time, what happens if you... Uh, don't get zero over zero, you just get zero in the bottom. Okay? So let's make just a little flow chart of, of how things are going so far. So, um, so far. Find limits. The first thing you should do is try and um, <laughs> Substitute in the x value of in the x value. Okay. I'm going to try and make this look like a flow chart. So, does it work? And by work, I mean you get a, a real number answer. And does it's either yes or no, right? So, if yes, then you are done. And if no, then there's two possibilities. It either doesn't work because um, you get zero denominator and zero numerator, or it doesn't work because you just get zero denominator. So if you get zero over zero, right? This is what we talked about the other day. That means that there's a hole in the function. And you gotta do stuff algebraically. Maybe you try factoring. Maybe try other algebra that included the um, multiplying by the conjugate or maybe complex fractions or whatever. Okay? So today we're going to talk about what if you get um, like something else, like you plug in the number and you get something else over zero where A is not zero. Okay, for example, what if you have something like find the limit as x goes to 2 of 3 over x minus 2? When I substitute 2 in, I don't get 0 numerator, I get 3, and I get 0 denominator. Okay? So here's the deal. If Substitute in the x value. And get a zero denominator, but not zero numerator. Zero denominator. Non-zero 
then the function has a vertical flex into it at that point. So that's the case here. This function has a vertical asymptote. Now, I already know that this function has a vertical asymptote because I kind of know what it looks like, right? This is just a transformation of a basic function that we were familiar with. Like, I know that 1 over x looks like this, right? 1 over x minus 2 would be this graph just shifted two units which direction? To the right. Right? So this is just looking like this. And then the three just makes things steeper or whatever. It's a vertical stretch, which doesn't really change anything asymptote-wise. still looks like this. Okay? So I know what this graph looks like. I know there's an asymptote there. But the question is, what if I don't really know what it looks like? How could I figure out which way things are going? Like, there's different possible vertical asymptotes, right? There's a vertical asymptote where it goes up from both sides. There's a vertical asymptote where it goes down from both sides. And then there's a vertical asymptote like this where it's like one of each. Okay, either this way or that way. Right? So there's a way in limits to determine which of those situations is actually occurring. So, there's three, I'm just going to say types of vertical asymptotes. There's the vertical asymptote where they both go up, in which case the limit um, as x goes to a equals positive infinity. There's the vertical asymptote where they both go down, in which case limit as x goes to a equals negative infinity. And then there's a situation where you got one of each, like this situation that we're talking about here, in which case the limit as x goes to a does not exist. Okay? And you can, you can tell which situation it is just generally by looking at the one-sided limits, right? Like, if both one-sided limits are positive infinity, then it's this. If both one-sided limits are negative infinity, then it's this. If you get positive infinity from one side, but negative infinity from the other side, then it's this, right? So if we had some way to calculate one-sided limits, we could answer this question, which of the three types are we dealing with, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to look at the one-sided limits. Here's how to do that. To find one-sided limits, at a horizontal or at a vertical asymptote, rather, at a vertical asymptote. Just pick an x value close to it and determine the sign sign of the corresponding y value. So the theory is, like, if you have a vertical asymptote, for example, um, like in this particular function, if I know that the asymptote looks like this, or even if I don't know, but this is what it's like, right? Doesn't it make sense that if you pick an x value that's really close to it, but on the right-hand side of it, it's going to be a positive y value? 
if I pick a close enough point, it's going to be positive. And same thing here, if I pick a close enough point to the left of it, it's going to give me a y value that's corresponding with it, right? Just by determining that sign, if you, if you pick a point that's really close and you determine that its corresponding y value is positive, then you can kind of assume that the graph's going to positive infinity and vice versa. If you pick a point that's really close by and you get a point and you get a y value that's negative, then you can pretty much assume that the graph is going to negative infinity if you know there's an asymptote there already. Okay, so in this particular function, I would take the limit as x goes to 2, 3 over x minus 2, but I'm going to take the limit as x goes to 2 from the left. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a point that's close to 2, but to the left of 2, like 1.9 or something, something really close like that. And if I take 1.9 and I substitute it in here, I get 3 over 1.9 minus 2, which is a positive over a negative. Net result is this is negative, right? A positive over negative is always negative. So this is definitely less than 0. So this limit, this one-sided limit, we're going to say is negative infinity. And the theory is if you pick a point that's really close to 2 but to the left of 2, and its y value, so this is 1.9, and its y value is negative, there's, it's highly unlikely that the curve, that the, the function is going to be going down like that, go through that point, and then suddenly spike up and go to positive infinity. It would have to be a really weird function to do that, right? right. So that's it. If I take the limit as x goes to 2 from the right of 3 over x minus 2, this means you're going to pick a point that's close to 2, but to the right of 2, like 2.1. If I took 3 over 2.1 minus 2, this is a positive over a positive, which is a positive, greater than 0. So this one-sided limit is positive infinity, because it gives me a positive y value. So from the left, it's going to negative infinity, and from the right, it's going to positive infinity, which confirms what I know that the graph actually looks like in this case. It looks like that. Let's try another one. How about something like um, find the limit as x goes to negative 3 of 2 over x squared minus 9. The first thing I would do is I would try and factor just because I need to determine whether this is, um, you know, a common factor can cancel or not, right? So if I factor this, I get the limit as x goes to negative 3 of 2 over x minus 3 times x plus 3. Nothing cancels for sure in this case, right? So now I know, since I get a zero denominator and I don't get a zero numerator, I know that this is an asymptote. I just need to determine which type. So I'm going to take the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the left, and the limit as x goes to negative 3 from the right. So if I take a number that's close to negative 3 but to the left of negative 3, what number would that be? Like negative yeah, negative 3.1. If I plug that in, on the top, it's positive. On the bottom, negative 3.1 minus 3 is negative. Negative 3.1 plus 3, that's also negative. What's the net sign here? It's, no? It's positive. Two negatives? Yeah, uh, two, two negatives multiplied together give me a positive. So this ends up being positive. Result. This one sided limit is positive infinity because the net sign there is positive. Limit is x goes to negative 3 from the right. Same process. I'm going to pick a number close to negative 3 but to the right of negative 3, like negative 2.9, and plug that in. Positive on top. On the bottom, negative 2.9 minus 3, that's negative. Negative 2.9 plus 3, that's positive. Net sign here is negative. Right? 
So this is going to be negative infinity. So what this function ends up doing at negative 3, I don't know what it does at any other point, but at negative 3, from the left it goes to positive infinity, and from the right it goes to negative infinity. That's kind of what that function looks like. Now this one has another asymptote at positive 3, which I didn't investigate at all, but good. I want to do it, do the same thing. And I can determine pretty much exactly what this graph looks like. Okay. How about something like the limit as x goes to 1 of x plus 2 over x minus 1 squared. So again, if I substitute 1 in to the top, I don't get 0, I get 3. And in the bottom, I get 0. So that tells me there's a vertical asymptote. So I need to find the limit as x goes to 1 from the left, and the limit as x goes to 1 from the right. So from the left, I'm going to plug in 0 0.9. 0 0.9 plus 2 is positive. 0 0.9 minus 1 is negative, but then you square it with positive over positive. This is positive infinity. If I substitute in 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.1 plus 2 is positive. 1.1 minus 1 is negative, but then you square it, it's positive. Yeah, so so this answer then is positive infinity. This, this limit actually is positive infinity. This function looks like this. It's uh, at 1, there's a vertical asymptote, and in this case it goes up from both sides. Kind of like that. Up here, the answer to the final question here is it does not exist because the one-sided limits didn't equal each other. Right. Okay. Let's do one more. How about something like um, the limit as x goes to 1 of x plus 2 over x squared um, plus x minus 2. So if I substitute 1 into the top, it's not 0, it's 3. And if I substitute 1 into the bottom, it's 1 plus 1 minus 2, which is 0. So it's a vertical asymptote. Now, I could just jump right to the limit as x goes to 1 from the left and the limit as x goes to 1 from the right. But I'll actually make my life a little bit easier if I can cancel common factors here. It'll make it an easier expression to plug a number into than if I don't cancel common factors. So this factors. And the limit as x goes to 1, the top is x plus 2, and the bottom factors as x plus 2, x minus 1. So those just cancel. It's a lot easier to substitute a number into the fraction 1 over x minus 1 than it is to substitute a number into this original fraction, German and sign, I think. So I'm gonna, that's what all, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to substitute numbers into this fraction right here. So if I take 0.9 and plug it in, it's a positive over a negative. So this is negative infinity. If I take 1.1 and plug it in, it's a positive over a positive, which is positive infinity. Those don't agree, so this is does not exist. Now, what's happening in this function at negative 2? In this original function, what's happening at negative 2? What if they were asking us to find the limit as x goes to 
negative 2. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> There's a hole, because it, in this case, when you plug negative 2 in, it's 0 over 0. So you would factor, this is what we did last week, you would factor x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 1, which we already did. And then you just plug negative 2, x plus 2, x minus 1. Then you just plug negative 2 in, so you get negative 1 third is the answer. Well, in this case, there's a hole. In this case, as x goes to negative one or positive one, there's a vertical asymptote. So a vert, there's a vertical asymptote at one. There's a hole at negative two in this function. It says like two things happening. Is this making sense? Okay. On uh, delta math, um, so this section in delta math is just called um, limits of rational functions. Some of them. Um, are, are going to be points where there's a hole, and some of them are going to be points where there's a vertical asymptote. Okay, if there's a vertical asymptote, they actually just want you to say that the limit doesn't exist. Remember what I said before. Uh, there's certain textbooks that even when you have the situation like this, they say the limit doesn't exist because technically infinity is not a number. And then when you get to this situation, they also say the limit doesn't exist. When you get to this situation, they say the limit doesn't exist. So in all of these situations, there's not going to be a little button that says infinity, so it shouldn't be that confusing. You just say it does not exist. That's it. Okay. But it's helpful to be able to find out, well, does it does it look like that situation or this situation or that situation? Like if you had to actually graph this and you didn't have a calculator, you could use limits to graph it. You could figure out what direction things go. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, so that's it. Can I go print something? Sure. Where are you going to go? To the library, probably. Other. Okay.